Hello and welcome. My name is Dr. Andrea Ray, and I am a reproductive endocrinology and infertility specialist here at Shady Grove Fertility in the Fredericksburg office. And today I'd like to talk to you about PCOS. PCOS is a common condition that we see in a lot of our patients, and it stands for polycystic ovarian syndrome. And what this is is really just a hormone imbalance such that a woman is not able to ovulate. Without ovulation, an egg is not released, and it is not possible to conceive. So how do you know if you have PCOS? Typically, if you have PCOS, you will have some type of irregular menstrual cycles. They may be every five or six weeks apart, they may skip months, or you may not have them at all. If that's the case, then our first step is to make sure that there aren't any other medical conditions that could be causing this. Once we've ruled those out, then we typically would do an ultrasound. On the ultrasound, we look for signs of PCOS, which is typically seeing lots of follicles on the ovaries, typically around the perimeter of the ovary. We may also see other physical symptoms of PCOS, and this is usually reflective of high male hormones or testosterone or androgens in a woman's body. This may be acne, facial hair, or other unwanted hair that you may have noticed. Put Taking all of these into consideration helps us to determine whether a patient has PCOS, but there certainly is no one-size-fits-all with PCOS in making that diagnosis. We do see other conditions on ultrasound that can look like that, and certainly every woman with irregular menstrual cycles does not have PCOS, and this is really a discussion between you and your doctor. So what causes PCOS? We know that there may be some genetic component to it, and we also know that there's an association with abnormal insulin, insulin metabolism, so that we see this dysfunction in the way a woman is able to process sugar in her body, much like a diabetic. And the harder that her body is at processing that sugar, that can make her PCOS worse, make it more difficult for her to ovulate, and even contribute to obesity and diabetes down the road. So how do we treat PCOS? Assuming that a woman is trying to get pregnant, our first step is to optimize her health. If a woman is overweight, if she is uh, BMI over 30, our first step is to recommend weight loss through dietary control and, uh, and exercise. If there's a component of diabetes or borderline diabetes, then we recommend getting that under control as well. And sometimes with these uh, lifestyle changes, a woman is able to ovulate on her own and not even need fertility medication. Plus, Optimizing these health factors ahead of time will ensure the safest pregnancy for her and the healthiest baby in the end. So let's say we've corrected these lifestyle factors as much as possible, and a woman still is having irregular cycles. At this point, we would then move to oral medications like letrozole or clomiphene, Femara or Clomid as they may be called. These are pills that are taken for five days at the beginning of the cycle, after which we have the have you come in and we would monitor to see if a woman is responding and uh, safely to these medications. This also helps us to estimate the exact time that she will be ovulating. Once we know a woman's ovulating, then we would she can have intercourse at home or an insemination in the office. Most women do ovulate on these medications um, and most women, once they do ovulate, are able to achieve pregnancy within three to six cycles. For those women for whom these medications don't work, we would then move to stronger injections that we would monitor very closely. The bottom line is, is that we are able to get a woman to ovulate through one of these means, and once we are able to do so, usually it is much, uh, pregnancy follows uh, suit there quickly thereafter. If any of these treatments are unsuccessful, um, or if there are other factors present, then IVF is also a safe and very effective option for women with PCOS. So I think the take home message here is that PCOS is common, that there are many options and ultimately a lot of hope for these patients. And the best treatment for you is gonna be an individual decision between you and your doctor. I hope this was helpful and I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video today. If you have other questions, I would refer you to our website at www shadygrovefertility.com. Um, and thank you for taking the time to watch. I'm Dr. Andrea Ray. Have a great day.